Hey guys, John Robinson here, and if you're from a foreign country and you're in a war, don't take it personal, but fight your own fucking battles. We are busy with our own war, and yes, it is a fucking war. No matter how much the media and the government want to portray it as a civil war, which would be people against people, that's not the case here. This is not the North fighting the South. This is everybody uniting against a corrupt government that illegally makes us pay taxes and then not only violates the Constitution by sending them to you, but then comes back for more. Look, you've already killed the golden goose. The piggy bank is empty. Be thankful for what you got because you're on your fucking own. And the fact of the matter is what's going to happen in this country is simple. This revolution started a long time ago, a couple decades. When Y2K happened and people realized how inadequate the government was, people started filing exempt on their W-4s, stopping paying taxes outright, telling the government to fuck you. That's why they want this national bank card, which we're not going to let happen, because we know if that happens, they'll keep sending you money. It was never our job to promote democracy throughout the world. If you ever think a politician does something for you because he's good-hearted, no, it wasn't that. It was to fight communism. That's taken care of. Not only is it not our job to create a democracy for you, we don't have it at home anymore either, and that's one of the things we're rebelling against. They spy on our videos, our emails. They listen to our phone conversations. They know whether we're in the first floor or second floor of our fucking house, and if, they, if there's not that, it's a satellite. We are the most spied on people in the world. That ain't fucking democracy, and we know our votes don't matter. So the fact is, we're not going to let this national bank card come in where they can take our money and continue to send it to you. Sorry, we're not going to destroy us for your ass. We've already given all that any country has ever given everybody. Fuck it, man. We're going to survive. The vote comes down to you or us. Guess what side we're on. And if you're on this Shalom, Kon Lema, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash, all praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson if Satan be divided against Satan. So when the scriptures is talking about Satan being divided against Satan, it's talking about human adversaries. These civil wars that are brewing up, and particularly here in the daughter of Babylon, is where we can apply the scripture today because we see two opposing wings, left wing, right wing, divided against one another. And they're both two wings of the same bird, the eagle, or America, the daughter of Babylon. So the vision is increasingly getting more and more separate. So I want to go here to the book of Isaiah, chapter 19. So there is a large distress towards the political leaders here in this system. And that is attributed to a long history of deception, political scandal, corruption, greed, illegal wars, <clears throat> just to name a few. So Americans are gradually catching on to the fact that the system is rigged. We don't own anything because when we pay it off and we're still paying tribute or taxes in a international monetary fund. So the global elite or the new Rome is still subjugating the people underneath them. And they're doing it primarily through economics. 
And this is why we say all roads lead to the MOTB. And that's where this is going, to establish a system of total control. Let's read this first. So the enchantment is failing here. It's no longer effective. The enchantment is what was used to broadcast this great American dream, this democratic system, this country that was put on a pedestal to be the model for all countries to try to emulate or follow. So the countries are now realizing that it's just not prudent to follow a system, a system that's fallen and that was built after a failed model, which is wrong. Let's go here to the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> yeah, Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah 47. Yeah, let's go here. <laughs> Isaiah 47 and 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. So the wisdom, the knowledge to rule on the left hand side has caused the American elite and the global elite to become puffed up with pride. And the Bible says, pride goeth before destruction. The ultimate judge is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai that sets up leaders, lifts up one and put it down another, not man. And we know that by studying Psalms chapter 75. Let's go to verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it cometh. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. So one of the key or the keys to success in any military battle is the element of surprise. And that's going to come in the form of a surprise nuclear attack. And that's that desolation that's going to come. Chariots are going to be on the scene to take up the Lord's elect, the so-called UFOs. So the chariots are going to protect the elect from the nuclear blast and the intense heat that's going to create a hot lava lake effect, where we get the term the lake of fire in the scriptures. So that's going to be hell on earth. So the landmass of America is going to become hot lava. And then waters are going to be mixing in. It's going to create a steam effect from a tsunami, man-made from the devastating impact of these nuclear warheads. The land is going to be separated and broken up into islands, a desert. That's that sudden destruction. So the Lord is going to come along with that surprise attack. Every military commander wants to maintain the element of surprise. Is it not written, the Lord is a man of war? Let's go to verse 12, Isaiah 47 and 12. <clears throat> Stand now with thine enchantments with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth if so be thou shalt be able to profit if so be thou mayest prevail 
thou art weary in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. So when we look at the black box, which is the TV or the television tube, these are devices, our cell phone. Notice when it's turned off, it's a black box or a black mirror. And these are common tools used in black magic, sorcery, and witchcraft. We're looking into a black box or black mirror every time we utilize these cell phones and smart TVs. And the gentleman in the video alluded to this during the video. And this is one of the reasons why we need Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So we need that spiritual interference to be ran. And this is why he says, I have girded thee, though thou hast not known me. There's no way we can survive thousands of daily radio frequency attacks, 5G tower attacks, radiation wave attacks, television, black box or black mirror enchantments, cell phone enchantment. All of these things along with the food that we eat that is defiled, the water and juice that we drink defiled. So our bodies and our minds are being bombarded with defiled particles and all types of nanoparticles and harmful elements that are coming into our temple. So the earth is mourning because the wicked are in rulership and Satan is divided amongst Satan. Two opposing human adversaries. Let's go to Isaiah 19. Isaiah 19. Let's go to verse 11. Surely the princes of Zohan and our fools. Let's read that again. Isaiah 19, 11. Surely the princes of Zohan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. So we're under brutish leaders, which is beast-like, base-like. Let's look up that term brutish comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 1197. Ba'ad. Ba'ad. One moment. To become brutish. Yep, that's the right one. <clears throat> Away, waste. Wasteful consuming, wasteful. So this is, this gets into the daughter of Babylon or spiritual Sodom in Egypt living deliciously. And it was fattened up on resources and more than it can actually use. So this is a nation that's described as living deliciously more than enough, <clears throat> but yet we have a homeless population of over 600,000, so something is wrong. The middle class is slowly eroding, and the wealthy elite are getting more and more wealthy. During the previous two and a half years of the pandemic, millionaires became billionaires, billionaires became trillionaires so forth and so on. <clears throat> so America has a direct correlation to the pattern that Egypt followed. Isaiah 19 and 13, the princes of Zohan are become fools. The princes of Nov are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt. Even they 
that are the state of the tribes thereof. So the man mentioned being deceived by scandalous, greedy, corrupt political leaders. So these princes are officers. Moses was a prince in Egypt, but he abandoned his high position to suffer with his people, the Hebrew Israelites. So the leadership here is being exposed as being inept, greedy, corrupt, scandalous, mischievous, engaging in all types of freakism with children, you name it. So there is a drastic loss of confidence and trust and faith in a system that is just full of corruption. <clears throat> Let's go here, Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail branch or rush may do. So we see that now for the many jobs going away. And not only that, but the pay is not keeping up with the rising cost of goods. So they're just continuing to print more money. But the reality of the matter is, or the fact of the matter is, the dollar is continuing the, the dollar is continuing to lose value. Continuing to lose its value. And that's what's happening. And this is why we'll see certain volumes of juice or goods decrease, but the price either remains the same or goes up. So the dollar is getting weaker and weaker. Let's go in here to Sirach 19. So there's no wisdom left in Timon or Timan, pursuant to Jeremiah 49 and 7. We'll get to it, Lord willing. Sirach 19, verse 22. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence. So they're princes, they're officers, their leaders are practicing wickedness at every level of government and it's showing. So this is not wise for a ruler to abuse its citizens. Let's go to Sirach 10 real quick. <clears throat> the book of Sirach chapter 10. The book of Sirach 10, verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered as the judge of the people is himself. So are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. I did a lesson on this not too long ago about King Joseph training his senators. If I'm not mistaken, that's Psalms 122. So a wise man will help to cultivate, condition, and further develop the leadership structure underneath him if he's wise. But in this system in Babylon, the greedy, rich politicians are only in it to expand their own wealth and land and resources. <clears throat> Greedy, Sirach 19 and 23, there is a wickedness and the same an abomination, and there is a fool wanting in wisdom. He that hath small understanding and fear of God is better than one that have much wisdom and transgressive the law of the Most High. 
So Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai is looking for a meek and humble spirit, broken hearted, and weary of this wicked, corrupt system. Vex in the spirit. Go to Ecclesiastes ten verse five. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. So the Lord's kings and priests are subject unto payment in this wicked system. So this is all a part of being chastened because the Bible says, Humility comes before honor. So this is a graduated system of tests and challenges, trials and tribulation, so that the Most High can build up leaders of experience. Ex experience means tried out, tested and proven. So this is a part of the battle to undergo adversity. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. And this reminds me of that statue they took down at the uh, Natural Museum of Arts and Science in New York, Theodore Roosevelt, where he had a so-called northern, so-called Native American northern kingdom man on his right side and a so-called Negro Southern kingdom man on his left side. And Theodore Roosevelt was sitting on his high horse. So they took that statue down because of the intensity of this truth going out at such a high volume. And they're taking down our videos, just like the man said, monitoring our videos, listening to our videos and phones. <clears throat> He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. So the pit that the global uh, wicked elite is big and is building <clears throat> is slavery. They're trying to build a global digital electronic system that forces everyone into permanent servitude through economic bondage, rising cost of goods, the devaluing of the dollar, inflation and monetary spending, rendering the economic base worthless so that they can subjugate the citizens in this slave system through debt. The Bible says that the servant is debtor to the lender or servant to the lender. Let's go here. Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And that's what's happening right now. <clears throat> there is a cry at the gate. The financial situation is in dire straits. The degradation in morality is getting worse. We're just, every year, we get more and more demoralized. I don't know how many saw it. There was a so-called black woman, looked like she was waiting in a line at an airport, and the mini skirt was so short, her entire but was showing, and there was no underwear on this woman. She wasn't even wearing any underwear. So we've been raised in a system where it's grievous to correct someone. They won't receive correction. And when you try to be a man in this system, you're accused of toxic masculinity. Men are kicked out of homes, and women are paid government substance subsidies and government stipends and incentives 
to become single parent mothers, raising several generations of delinquent children, disobedient children. So this system feeds into a multi-billion dollar privatized prison industrial complex. So it's all a business model. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. So the Edomites are in rulership right now. The Bible says in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Jacob's hand is holding on to the second leg of the revised Roman Empire. The end, the last standing rulership on the earth. And then the order of the ages or eons of time. So we're in that time. This is the generation that's in the last days under the last ruling empire in which Yahweh Shai would appear. Let's close out with that one. Daniel 2 and 44. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. Let's go to verse 41. Daniel 2 and 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as Iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. So, Rome is the last ruling empire, and we know that America, the European Union, and NATO is Rome 2.0. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So some of these nations are just economically collapsed, economically collapsing, Greece being one of them. And so... This creates a weakness across the alliance because the alliance is only as strong as its weakest link because it has to absorb the debts, the food shortages, the oil and product services, and the shortages in goods and services and supplies. So it absorbs and bears the burden of these nations that are trailing behind. And then it's pulling in other United Nations that it's trying to curve the wealth gap, which just does not work because nations are not, they're not all on the same level of productivity or labor efficiency. So it just does not work and it's failing. And then you have a military that's outreach or overstretch its bounds and you cannot effectively sustain a military that's spread out like that because it causes the it's a financial strain and that's happening now and as the toes so the ten toes the uh, NATO countries <clears throat> And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle, them, mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So these nations are fracturing. There's no cohesive unit throughout these federations of nations. <clears throat> and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven 
set a big kingdom. <clears throat> and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So this is the kingdom underneath the throne of David, the Davidic dynasty being established and Yahweh is gonna occupy that throne. Let's look up other people. So this kingdom is exclusively set aside for the Israelites to rule for eternity. Other people. Let me see here. Oh, it's not going to really give me a good what I'm looking for. Other. Yeah, it's not going to really give me what I want. All right, we'll go ahead and end it right there. Other nations. See? So it's not going to be left to other nations or other people outside of the nation of Israel. <clears throat> Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. We'll go ahead and get one more. I think it's Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew 12 and 25, if I'm not mistaken. And this is Shai speaking. Matthew 12 and 25. And Yahawashai knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So we have two opposing forces or wings at odds against one another. The left wing, the conservative, the right wing, the liberal liberals. So the left wing liberal and the right wing conservative. So this is what we're dealing with here, the two party system. Anyway, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Kankadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yeshua and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatan. Shalom.